What is up guys? I just wanted to do a video, a rant actually, on Sailor Moon because I've been getting into Sailor Moon again recently after a long hiatus of being into Precure and Tokyo Mew Mew and I wanted to do a video on something that has been bothering me especially as a kid when I loved Sailor Moon a lot and this is about Sailor Saturn and how she got no screen time in the original 90s anime and just as an obvious warning, if you haven't seen Sailor Moon this video contains spoilers. Okay, so we first see Sailor Saturn introduced as Hotaru in episode 112, I believe. The girls are going to a Wild Wild West movie that's being shot. And we see Hotaru and she meets Chibiusa slash Rini. And from then on, we get a lot of good Hotaru-focused episodes. And we see how she's shy and very frail and how she's sad and she's like hurting her classmates because there's something inside of her that she doesn't know anything about and it's like this evil. Later it is revealed that Mistress Nine is possessing her and she has to break free and take her body back until we finally see Sailor Saturn in episode 125. This is the first and sadly the only episode that Sailor Saturn appears in Sailor Moon S. Which is very foolish, like she only appears in one episode and that's it. And even then, it's a very, very brief appearance. We see um Saturn and she talks to Sailor Moon about how she's no longer Hotaru. And she goes and jumps into Pharaoh 90 to defeat him. And we don't see her transform, we don't see her do a special attack. She just backflips into the darkness and he's hacking and slashing. But you don't even see her do anything, it's just beams of light. And this scene left a lot to be desired. They are probably going for the whole, the less you see her, the more you love her type of thing. But the less we see her, the more we want to see her. Like, that's just as simple as it gets. And for those of you who are seeing Sailor Saturn didn't transform in the manga version of this season, well, neither did Sailor Pluto, and we still got Pluto Planet Power. The anime has a habit anyways of creating stuff that's original and it's not from the manga, they just create their own thing. So what's to say they couldn't make a transformation? I know some people say a transformation sequence would have ruined the mood because the episode is very dark and serious, but there's still a way to put a transformation. Just put a song that's more serious, like this. Anyways, that was the only episode she appeared in, like just that one episode. Let's move on to the next season, Sailor Moon Super S. This was a big letdown because in the f um what's it called in the fourth season of the manga or like the fourth arc sailor saturn played a very important role along with the other three outer soldiers but they were just cut from the season completely in favor of a more youthful plot line featuring chibiusa and helios as the main focus um ironically even though they were cut super s was actually my favorite season but let's not talk about that right now let's like stay on topic but Sailor Saturn played a big role in awakening um, the other outers into their super forms and just like fighting the Amazonas Quartet. Um, but she was, wasn't in this season, meaning that all her development had to be saved for the next season. And this season is Sailor Stars, the last season of Sailor Moon, and a very disappointing one because any screen time that Sailor Saturn could have had, she just didn't have it. Basically, she only appears at the beginning of the season and the end. She doesn't appear in the middle, nor does she get any filler episodes that could have added to her character development. We first see her as baby Hotaru, and then she awakens the other three Outer Scouts and gets them their super forms. She doesn't appear in Sailor Scout form until the next episode, 168, which I remember the numbers of these because she appears in so few, so I remember. But little Hotaru is just, um in bed and she's approached by Sailor Saturn and she reawakens her memories of her past life and um, it's a really beautiful scene she starts smiling and remembering Chibiusa and then she starts crying and remembering the sad memories and the symbol appears on her forehead the symbol of Saturn and she says I know what my destiny is the outer scouts are just in the living room chilling until the bedroom door opens and we see Hotaru um, back to the age that she was in Sailor Moon S. It's such a cool scene. She's like, oh, destiny is approaching. We have to act fast. Another thing that's also worth mentioning is that this goes to show how very little they care about the character because while she is back to the age she was in Sailor Moon S, every other following scene when she's in civilian form, she is back to a toddler. So they really didn't care to draw her consistently. Maybe they figured she wasn't going to appear very much so they could just draw her however they wanted. Anyways, the next morning, the inner soldiers have to fight these naked mirror ladies, and as usual, they are having trouble fighting, so the outers have to jump in, and this is probably one of my favorite scenes of the entire Sailor Moon anime. Um, Sailor Uranus and uh, Neptune Pluto, they're like, oh, we have one more person, and Sailor Moon and Chibiusa are like, oh, it can't be, and then Sailor Saturn introduces herself with the outer soldier song playing in the background. 
this scene was very badass and i really like how chibiu says like oh hotaru it's you and she's like rini like it's been it's been long rini slash chibiu so i like to say rini but this is the moment that is very very disrespectful even though saturn got introduced Sailor Uranus swoops in and attacks the monsters instead of her. And I'm just here thinking, Sailor Uranus, like you just got your upgrade last episode. Why are you trying to steal her thunder? I just thought it was very rude. Sailor Saturn didn't do any attack in the entire episode. She only served to help awaken Eternal Sailor Moon, but she didn't slash the monsters. She didn't attack with her new awakened powers. She was just there. Very disappointing scene. The next few episodes, Saturn also does not do anything. Um, we see more scenes of the inner soldiers and the outers, you know, attacking more monsters. But whenever there's any opportunity to show Saturn fighting the glass naked ladies, they just don't show it. A lot of people argue that this is because Saturn is a last resort. She's some kind of destructive weapon that can't really fight normally. And she has to be used only at the most dire situations. But no, 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 no. This is incredibly false because in the manga, when she awakens a super sailor saturn she's able to use some regular attacks like silence glaive surprise is a standard attack um such as space sword blaster or submarine reflection it's on that type of level in it's used to uh, attack the amazon quartet but in this anime they decide to make it some kind of suicide bomb that you know is used as a last resort which is ridiculous like why are you writing her off as some kind of useless character she attempts to use this in episode 172 against Nehalenia, but obviously um it's stopped by sailor chibi moon because she doesn't want her to die and saturn gets trapped into a mirror and that's the last that we see of her but oh well they just decide to go the route of having her be useless okay like i said she doesn't appear in the next episode or the next one or the next one because all that focus goes to the sailor starlights they just take any screen time she could have had saturn is super irrelevant and the most disrespectful moment that sailor saturn had the most shade that was thrown at her was episode 190 in this scene in this episode there's a scene where sailor moon is fighting a monster called sailor amuse and he's like throwing balloons at them and she's trying to protect sailor starfighter slash seiya but then the outer soldiers swoop in to protect them and save them and sailor uranus is like oh we are the three soldiers of the outer system and i'm thinking um aren't you missing one aren't you being really rude right now and missing someone and pretending she's not there yeah sailor saturn easily could have been in this scene and protected them using silence wall to uh, block the balloons maybe even have the balloons deflect and hit back the monster there is no mention of hotaru no one bothers to wonder how she's doing like who's babysitting her like where is she no one cares like i said in the manga she fights regular monsters she's not some kind of last resort even in the sailor moon musicals she is fighting the anima mates the the remless monsters like it's no problem she's not some kind of like last resort that if she uses her powers the world's gonna end no 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 i just want to get that misconception out of the way because people seem to think that she can't use her powers at all no she can slash and do everything she wants we don't see her up until episode 196 where she protects eternal sailor moon from galaxia's thunder that is raining down um sailor moon exclaims pluto saturn but she doesn't wonder like where they have been why i have why has saturn been absent she doesn't exclaim that she misses hotaru i guess she doesn't really care about her either but during the fight with galaxia saturn is still very useless as always she manages to protect uranus and neptune from one of her bracelet attacks but ultimately her glaive gets destroyed and really really disrespectfully uranus and neptune steal saturn's star seed um didn't she help awaken you guys into your super forms why are you gonna like kill her like that it's very disrespectful for me a better way to have written this finale would have been for uranus and neptune and pluto their star seeds they can get taken but galaxia acknowledging that saturn is super powerful possesses her or hypnotizes her or brainwashes her and gives her some bracelets and you get this ultimate showdown between eternal sailor moon versus super sailor saturn um so sailor moon the starlights have to fight galaxia and saturn that would have been an awesome scene as a finale Comment below if you think that would be an awesome scene, because I just came up with that recently, and that would be fire to have <laughs> Eternal Sailor Moon fight Super Sailor Saturn. Like, that would have been a cool scene, and it would totally have made up for the fact that Saturn didn't get any screen time, but no, you decide to cut her out in the finale too. So disrespectful. Even at the end when Saturn was revived, you don't get to see a lot of close-ups of her face. She's like 
Arigato Usagi, and you don't see her, like, face close up, you know what I mean? Like, it's not even just that they're making her appear less, it's like, even when there is scenes focused on her, they try so hard to avoid showing her. You see close-ups of the inners, and even Uranus and Neptune, but Pluto and Saturn, they're way in the back, they're just over there saying thank you. And Hotaru isn't pissed at all that Uranus and Neptune try to steal her star seed. She's like, look guys, shooting stars, I would have been like, you guys are really disrespectful. I will like try to steal your star seeds now because you try to be rude to me and steal mine. So in a nutshell, the 90s anime was very rude to Sailor Saturn. She got no transformation sequence, no attack sequence, no screen time. But let's talk about Sailor Moon Crystal. Even with only appearing in one or two episodes, I believe, in Sailor Moon Crystal, Saturn gets way more screen time than she ever got in the Sailor Moon uh, 90s anime. I'm excited for the next season, um, the dream arc, because this is going to be a movie and it's going to follow the manga as all of Sailor Moon Crystal does. So we'll finally be able to see Sailor Saturn um, transform within an episode or a movie and, you know, use her powers like she's supposed to, not some kind of suicide bomb. Just be a powerful, uh, purple, badass Sailor Scout that she is meant to be. My dream is that after Crystal, we get another Sailor Moon anime maybe for the 30th anniversary or the 35th anniversary. And the basic premise of this third anime would be um, quicker than the 90s, but also longer than Crystal. So instead of 40 or 12 episodes, we get 26 episodes per season. And this would have a lot of good filler so we can get character development, but also a lot of stuff retained from the manga. And just the perfect adaptation, because I feel like Sailor Moon itself is a great story, but each adaptation isn't perfect like some adaptations are better than the others with the manga we don't get enough personality or filler and in the anime we get a little bit too much filler and not enough focus on certain characters like saturn i especially love the sarah mew sailor moon musicals because they have a lot of saturn scenes one of my favorite scenes is in le movement fin finale i believe it's called um super sailor saturn and chibi moon appear and they fight the sailor anima mates together and this is a scene that could have totally fit into the anime. Well, maybe not Chibi Yusuke, she was in the future. But just having Saturn fight as part of the team on a regular, everyday filler episode. Anyways, let's hope for the best for our favorite Scout of Destruction. Yeah.